Truth or fiction, Steve? Spending more money on the cybersecurity problem solves all your issues. Fiction. Uh, absolutely fiction. Uh, do you have to spend more than you used to? Probably. But you can't just spend your way out of the problem. I think it starts with uh, strategy, people, and uh, technology to do what you need to do. The, the industry or the analysts who monitor the industry say that the year-on-year -year spend is growing at about 9%, maybe a little bit more, a little bit less. I mean, that tends to indicate people are spending more money on security. Yeah. My personal opinion is we've maybe spent it in some of the wrong areas historically. Yep. We're refocusing where we need to do that, uh, that spend as an organization. I think you made the point that 95-5 yep. doesn't mean 95% of the budget is on your traditional things. You have 50% of the budget should be more balanced in terms of how you're going to respond to an incident. Because I think we've accepted as an industry, you are going to be breached at some point. I mean, your, your feelings on that as a CISO? Yeah. I, I, I absolutely agree uh, with that. Uh, if you look at the average breach that happens, it's 160 plus days uh, to discovery. Um, that's just unacceptable. That means you've given the attacker an opportunity to do all the damage that they want, have freedom to get around your network, etc. For our program, I task my team average of 24 hours from the time something starts to the time that they're able to mitigate it, uh, identify it and mitigate it. Um, that doesn't mean that nothing bad is happening. It means that when something bad happens, we're catching it very, very quickly and being able to contain it. How do you do that on a global basis? I mean, Cisco doesn't just uh, operate in this beautiful yeah. area where the sun's shining, right? There's, you operate globally, you're a global organization. I mean, that's yeah. uh, always an interesting discussion I have with CISOs, is how do you do this on a global yeah. basis? So, uh, I think uh, one is we do business in 170 countries. We have one global network uh, that's serves all of our 120,000 employees. Um, and so we use that network as a ginormous sensor. We collect about four terabytes of data every day that we bring in and say, let me run a, a play. Play is, what am I trying to protect? What are the threats that are against it? Yep. What do I do if I see something? And what data do I use to detect that something is happening? And so we use that basic model to identify when something went wrong and, and give an analyst or an investigator tools to do something about it. Yeah, and that's another interesting discussion I'm having yeah. and, and probably be our next discussion as well, but around how much of the machine is replacing the human in that sort of discovery phase. We talk about machine supervised learning. So yeah. uh, I personally don't believe that machines ready to take over the world just yet. Yeah. Um, they still need those analysts who have got history and feel and understand what's happening in the dark web. Um, I mean, are you guys seeing the same thing? I, I think uh, humans um, are much better at uh, free form, thinking, agility, yeah. et cetera. And what you do is when you can recognize a pattern that the human has figured out, then you automate that. But you can't just automate things you have no clue uh, about. And so I think that's how you start is look for the pattern in, in the way the investigator and the way the breaches are happening, automate those, and now I get speed and scale. Right. And do you see that that's reducing the number of staff in there? I mean, I don't see that happening. I, I still, you know, whilst I believe malware is dumbing down, yeah. the, the way the, the bad guys are attacking is, I mean, the incredible sophistication there. It's in scale, right? right? I mean, they're Bricks, using, yeah. they're using web-based technology and cloud technology to scale their attacks. Yes. Um, so the scale, the frequency, the time to market, uh, traumatic uh, improvements for them uh, to come after us. They don't have to get things right once. We have to get it right over and over and over again to defend against it. So absolutely, I think uh, they're using web scale against us and we have to use scale against them. Right, and I think that's an area where um, the security industry hasn't kept up with yep. the criminals, right? I mean, they've used the hyperscalers, they've looked at the market and said, what's the best means yep. for us to deliver yeah, this yeah, attack? Yeah. Whereas from a more of a defensive point of view, which the industry comes from, we haven't taken on those advantages of the hyperscalers or the connectivity. And it's um, it's just interesting how they were able to react instantly. Yep, and I think uh, part of uh, our challenge is when we do deploy those technologies, how do we quickly and effectively deploy them at scale and reduce the false positive uh, so that we can actually scale with them. And that's the part of the, the trick. And so organizations are having to deal with probably more complex compliance regulation that government bodies are setting. 
um, industry is setting on their own you know, verticals, things like that. Are you seeing an impact from that in terms of your spend and the cost of being regulated? Uh, yeah, I think uh, one of the challenges that uh, security has to face today is every country is sort of doing their own thing. Right. And so how do you keep track of what's going to impact you, when it's going to impact you, et cetera. So as a global company, you actually have to invest in understanding and I think influencing those regulatory bodies to some degree, the ones that are going to affect you, so that you can manage uh, and, uh, and sort of forecast what things you're going to need to deal with uh, a year from now or two years from now. Right, and the, the European uh, re regulation GDPR, came in. GDPR, yeah. yeah. I mean, was that a big cost to your business? Um, I think it was uh, a cost to the business, absolutely, uh, to get ready, but um, I think it was also good for the business because it, it, it gave us an impetus to really focus on a few things, do them really well and completely, and change sort of the model of how we thought about those regulations. So the next ones that are coming from Ch Japan or Singapore or wherever um, are going to be easier to digest and uh, get ready for. So I think the, uh, the answer to the question, fiction. Spending more money doesn't necessarily make you more secure or reduce your risk, yep. but making sure that money is spent in the right position within an organization is absolutely critical. And, and I think one other thing that I'd end on is um, it's about culture and building into your culture and your people uh, awareness and process so they can do the right thing easily. Uh, that also is an important part of uh, a good strategy or a security program. Thank you.